Hi guys, welcome back to Rybrook TV. Welcome to a rather foggy Wales and welcome to the latest arrival in the Land Rover Defender family. This is the Defender 130. This particular 130, I think, is specced pretty much perfectly. You've got the black paint against the black wheels against the black interior, and then you've got all the black elements here. So the black pack gets you the grill here, etc., etc., and the lights around and all that sort of stuff in black. Now, this also has a load of accessories. So you've got the roof rails, you've got the ladder on the side, you've got the side steps, you've got the little container on the far side as well. I think it all adds up to make this car look really, really good. But where are the differences? At the front, it just looks like a normal Defender, doesn't it? If you follow me round the side, it's almost business as usual as you go along the side. You've still got two big doors, as you, like, as you do on the 110, side steps make it really easy to get in and get stuff off the top as, as well as the ladders. But it's when we get to here that things are a little bit different. So Land Rover have added 340 millimeters from the B pillar back, which actually has made this Defender 130 10 centimeters longer than the seven seat version of the Range Rover. But what does that mean? It means that the 130 doesn't just have a load of space for the passengers in the middle row of seats. We also have another three seats in the rear, a third row of seats. So the 130 is offered as standard as an eight seater. Off the top of my head, I can't think of any other car that's available as an eight seater. And it's not like these are little skimpy seats that are an afterthought. Oh no, they're fully leather. You can have them heated as well. And they're actually a really nice place to be. You wouldn't think that being all the way back here would be quite nice, but it is. They've thought about the people back here. You've got another sunroof directly above you as well, which makes sure that this car still feels nice, light and airy, even all the way back here. It's actually, it's genius. If you need even more space, I think the 130 is pretty much a surefire thing. There's so much space. I'd, I'd like to say where have they found it from, but it, it, it's, it's because this car is very big and that's where it's been found from. But if you need a load of space, you need a big car, then this is a perfect thing. Now with the 130, you don't even have to have these seats if you don't want to. If you wanted more space, you can have it just as a five seater at no additional cost. And of course, the other benefit of pushing the car further back that way, adding more metal and space, means that you don't really sacrifice on boot space by having these seats as well. The eight seater versions have 389 liters of boot space with all three rows extended. And then if you want loads of space, drop all the seats that extends to a massive 2,300 liters. And if you opt for the five seater Defender and then drop all the seats, it increases again to 2,516 liters. Moving back into the second row of seats, I just wanted to show you some of the practicalities of them. Obviously there's plenty of space, plenty of knee room, plenty of headroom but these seats aren't fixed, so they can move forwards and backwards as well. So if you need more space in the rear, there we go, you can easily move them back and forth. There is then also climate control here, so dual zone for either side. You've also got in the middle, nice little armrest with some cup holders in here too. Nice grab handles here. Everything feels nice and sturdy, well built. There's plenty of space. The leather is really nice and soft as well and the pan roof just makes things so light and airy. Has anything changed in the front? It is business as usual in the driver's seat of the 130. The interior here, the dashboard, etc., is exactly the same as it is in any other Defender. So we've got this perfect blend between ruggedness and style. It's really well thought out. You've got the new larger Pivi Pro infotainment screen, which runs Apple CarPlay. Um, you've got all the buttons here, which are 
again, really nice to feel, but they, they feel rugged and feel like they're not going to break. You've got grab handles everywhere. You've got these points here, which can be winched from, which is pretty ridiculous. You've got the digital display directly in front of you. The little, little ratchets here and so on. Defenders are great places to sit and they just, I think they've struck a perfect blend between being off-roady and rugged, but still being quite stylish. They've become so incredibly popular defenders since they were launched and since we first sat in one uh, two years ago now, actually. But they are brilliant. We absolutely love a Land Rover Defender here on Ryrick TV. And I think the 130 seems on the surface to be a great alternative if you need a bigger car. But what does it drive like? You have a choice of engines available with the Defender 130. You've got petrols and diesels, of course. This particular car is a P300, which offers just under 300 horsepower and 470 newton meters of torque. It's a three liter, six cylinder mild hybrid. And well, when you get your toe down, it picks up quite nicely. You've also got a few different trim levels. This particular car is an X Dynamic, so it's got a lovely amount of specification on it. But what about the way it drives? Well, to be completely honest, it feels to me just like a Defender 110, which is a good thing. And well, it kind of was always gonna feel like a 110 because it's pretty much on exactly the same base. So it means it rides very well on the road. That's quite a good little feature that just popped up. You might have heard that beep. That's a speed camera. We're on an average speed camera road at the minute, and this keeps popping up and telling me that there's an average speed camera, which is pretty good. But anyway, back to the drive. Steering is nice and weighty. It doesn't feel too light. It doesn't feel too heavy. It feels like you've got good control over the car. Now, of course, when you really start to press on, it starts to feel its weight because, of course, it's very big and very heavy. But then you're not buying a Defender 130 for it to be the last word in automotive precision. You buying it for the extra space, for the high driving position, for the relaxing drive, and for its off-road capabilities. Now, even though there's more of an overhang at the rear, Land Rover say that this car's off-road capabilities haven't been affected whatsoever. Now, unfortunately, we haven't got a chance to test that today, but hopefully, in the future, we'll be able to have a real go in one of these off-road, and we'll, of course, bring you along for that one. But all in all, I think the Defender 130 drives incredibly well on the road. It's nice and quiet. And I really like this high riding driving position. It's spot on. You have a really great view out all over the place. And for a car that really is as big as this, it's not that hard to place on the road. It's actually very easy because you've got such a good view out, and especially over the bonnet, you always know where all four corners of the car are. And even through some really twisty, small, tiny little Welsh B roads this morning coming over here, it still feels easy. It doesn't feel like you're going to ding a wing or you're going to scratch the wing, wing mirrors or anything like that. You're not going to hit anything because it's very easy to place. And yes, there's no getting away from it. It's a big car. So in car parks and stuff, it probably might be a little bit more of a trick to, to maneuver, but cars are all getting bigger these days. So I don't really see what the problem would be. You've just got the added benefit of having the extra space, the extra seats, and it still drives just as well as a Defender should. So what are my final thoughts on the new Land Rover Defender 130? Well, if you're after a Land Rover Defender, but you need more space, you need extra boot space, you need eight seats, then this is a perfect car for you. It still drives just like another Defender does, and it feels fantastic on the road, feels fantastic inside. It is a great car. Now, if you want any more information on the Land Rover Defender 130 or any Land Rover product for that matter, please use the link in the description of this video to contact your nearest Rybrook Land Rover retailer. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you guys again very soon.